Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our digital launch for Bashaya Aris book, The Secret Life of Dubai Street Cat. So we're so happy to have you with us. And today I wanted, on behalf of the DreamWork Collective, Bashaya's publisher, to introduce you to the team. Um, so we have Bashaya, our author. And Bashaya, if you wanted to just introduce yourself, talk a little bit sure, about sure. the book. Bashaya Aras, I'm an Emirati author and the Secret Life of Dubai Street Cats is my debut novel. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And then bringing the book to life uh, very closely is oh, Ailish. Okay. Ailish, if you wanted to introduce yourself. Hi, yeah. Um, so I'm a, a designer illustrator and uh, was incredibly lucky to be able to join this project. I'm uh, Irish based in Spain. And um, yeah, it was a, a, a fantastic project to be part of. Fantastic. And then um, the, the fourth person to join our team a little bit later was Miriam, our designer. Hi, I'm Miriam. I'm a graphic designer. I'm based in Dubai. And I worked on the layout of the book, including the cover and everything that went with it. I took Eilish's work. I took Talia's work, I, you know, and put, put the book together. So. I feel really like that. you kind of joined the puzzle pieces together. We gave you some raw yeah. materials and said, exactly. please turn this into a book. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was a fun puzzle. <laughs> it was great. It was great. So um, I thought it would be interesting for people watching to talk a little bit about um, the process behind putting a book together. I think people often think it's really easy. Um, and you just sort of like write a Word document and then press print. So to disabuse everyone of this notion, um, I thought we'd go through all the stages. And Bashaya, let's start right at the beginning with you. Um, what gave you the idea for the book? And then how did you go about writing it? And how long did it take? Are you sure? <laughs> I'm not sure how much time we have to cover that story. <laughs> well, like a little potted, a little potted history. I'll try to the short. So, um... Basically, I never loved cats until I rescued a street cat myself. And then that just introduced me to the world of Arabian mouse. I learned so much about them, never knew much about them before. And um, I actually initially, I wrote the story in 2015. And initially when I wrote the books, I actually wrote them as a series of short stories, like almost like picture books. So it was for a much younger audience. Right. And yeah, it was supposed to be based in Dubai, but it was much less detailed. And then I thought to myself, as I learned more about the Arabian mouse in my you know, journey of rescuing a cat and trying to find him a home, I thought, you know what, there's a world of potential out there in telling, their, in telling these street cat stories. So then that got me started into writing the novel. And initially I had so much uh, excitement and passion. There was so much momentum just between myself and I. Um, um, but eventually I just got bored of the story. I just left it, uh, put, it, put it away. I felt like I couldn't get the story to where it needed to be. And then it was in 2019 that I actually decided to revisit the story. And that's when I approached the DreamWork Collective. And I was so shocked when they responded <laughs> to me, to be honest. I wasn't expecting them <laughs> to respond and so quickly as well. Really? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But one thing led to another. And I, my gosh, two years later, less than two years later, we're here. Less than two years. Yeah. So I remember getting the book in. So at DreamWork Collective, we're a publisher based in Dubai and we have an open submissions process. So people can send in their work. Um, and I remember uh, reading your story, Abishai, and not even finishing it until I sent it to Kira and Rihanna. And we're a team of animal lovers um, at DreamWork anyway. And I was really excited. But we didn't have many children's books. So I sent them a, uh, an email saying, you have to read this. Um, and then for us, um, quite a difficult stage actually was the hunt for the perfect illustrator. I don't know if you remember Bashaya, but we sent you lots of samples. There was lots of back and forth. And we, we, we looked together um, at lots of different styles of illustration that we liked. Um, can you remember what you, what you told us that you wanted? I remember just wanting the sketches like pencil drawn and uh, uh, and I you know there, I, I like modern illustrations but sometimes I feel like 
in certain modern illustrations, I feel like there's a lack of innocence or life and soul in them. And, yes. and what I felt with, with Eilish's illustrations, it was the complete opposite of that, you know, you know, it was full of life and innocence. And I could feel this sense of mystery as well, which was perfect for the world of street cats. So I remember us talking about wanting it quite dark and gritty. And um, because yeah. actually when you submitted your first, when you first submitted your yeah. Sarita Shire, it was actually quite a lot darker. There was some quite gruesome deaths <laughs> going on. And we yeah. cut that. You and I worked together, made it a little bit more child friendly. <laughs> there was one gruesome death. Yeah. <laughs> there was one <laughs> gruesome death on the, actually, the manuscript that I sent you all was the toned down <laughs> version. Oh, so. there was a death but, and a suicide, I think. Was it, was it a, no, I think it wasn't a suicide, but it was just um, an uh, an accident. Of our, 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 yeah, an unfortunate right. accident. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we, we knew that we wanted to have quite uh, atmospheric um, illustrations, not dumbing down for children, not too colourful. Um, and then we found Ailish, which was really exciting. And I think, Ailish, we sent you a couple of chapters and then we asked you to do some sample drawings. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I got the first chapter. And um, I actually have um, the first sketch that I did. Um, Do you? I have the, the first sketch that I did. I have it here. Oh, look at that. Um, and I That's have so this fun. idea of like three cats. I mean, this was just a concept I, because I've never been to Dubai. So that was like a super extra challenge for me. But I had this idea of a, a growing city. And I, I yeah. this idea of trains. And so that was kind of the first um sketch that I did um but I love the idea of I mean and it's very it's a rare opportunity to do um illustration with a slightly dark tone and it kind of it just fits so well with kind of my aesthetic um, um and and I think also in terms of like the na naiveness of the illustration um and uh, and also I think the grittiness because I wanted to bring in a little bit of the of the manual side. So it didn't feel like high tech, but actually a little bit more low tech, almost like if a child had yes. had, had done them, um, slight, slightly imperfect. And I think that just brings it a little bit um, more authenticity because I, do, I, I kind of agree. I think, I mean, there's an amazing modern illustrations, but I do think the book needed that kind of um, uh, na naivety where it, it almost felt like a child was, was doing the illustrations and it can be slightly imperfect and slightly messy um but um I love the first chapter it was uh, incredible and then I remember there I think there was some time between me submitting the first illustrations and so. getting the email um and it was just I, I couldn't believe it I was like so excited um I think also for me to be able to 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 illustrate um uh, cu cultural references mm. um, um, I thought was uh, also a very um, a, a challenge because obviously we did get some things wrong because obviously I haven't uh, been to Dubai and I didn't know kind of like the, the protocol of going into the mosque and things like that um, which was um, fa fascinating to, 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 to learn about but um, yeah I loved how different the cats were in the story and I think the whole process of actually uh, coming up with the, the different char char characteristics based on the cat's identity, I think was one of the most fun parts of the project. Yeah, definitely. And actually, as you're talking about that, I'm going to share my screen because what I loved, and um, I don't know how much Miriam and Bashaya got to see this, I think Bashaya, you did a bit, was to see some of the behind the scenes work. And I think we forget how um, that so much work goes into the finished illustration. And you see my screen here where I'm sharing Ailish's lovely character stories of the of the cats um well, i've seen this before talia you you haven't no i haven't no i haven't it's lovely isn't it i haven't either this is beautiful. i don't think anybody has seen this this, <laughs> this was when, when i knew i was going to work on a cat project the first thing that i did was 
look for postures and you know cat positions and like I just I did hundreds of cats just just to to play around with the different kind of positions and characteristics without. because Eilish when we worked on um illustrating the book together um we spoke a lot about because lots of the the pictures are essentially three cats <laughs> hanging about. And so we spoke about the different positions that they might be in. Um, and we've got, I think, one of the early illustrations of the three cats early on in the book is one of the cats having a great big stretch. Um, so we wanted to make sure the postures were, were constantly different. And I think that your early work really helped show how they could be sleeping in different ways or resting in different ways. And then you also did a little bit of individual character work. So black so tail. <laughs> yeah, well, the three cats were quite different in terms of, are quite different in terms of their personality. So um, these were early kind of character developments uh, in terms of, you know, black tail being a young cat yeah. and playful and um, always distracted. <laughs> Um, yes. And then kill is kind of being like you know the 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 more uh, you know uh, well fed house cat mm. converted then into this kind of lost character um, who is ungroomed and 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 these were these were some of the first kind of character development sketches that I that I did. I um, I remember how fun it was seeing it develop. And um, I, I was in touch quite a bit with Bashaya during the process. And I remember, I think the cat that we had the most trouble with, um, I don't think she's here, is our leader, Sharp Claw. Because um, Aish, you had the challenge of, of drawing a pale cat on a pale background. Yeah, yeah. So that was tricky. I think the challenge was that the cats are four different colors. So, the backgrounds were, you couldn't have a white background because you wouldn't see sharp claw. And then you couldn't have a dark black ground because you couldn't see black, uh, black tail. And it couldn't, you know, and it was kind of like mm. really hard to kind of, and I think what work was, was really playing with the, the, the textures and having different texture changes throughout, throughout the, the image so that uh, in the ones where there's three cats, wherever black tail is, I would have like a lighter texture behind black tail so you could see it. So yeah, that was that was quite a challenge. And then I remember working on the cars. Um, and remember that my cars at the beginning were very um, Retro. friendly. <laughs> <laughs> they were quite cute. <laughs> And we wanted cars to be a little bit more aggressive. And I, I, I think very early on, I liked the idea of the pollution, you know, and the, the cars being like the, the, the enemy in the, in the book in a way, you know, and making them more aggressive and, and polluting and dangerous. And I think we made them a lot more angular based on, I think the initial cats that I did were very 1960s, almost like the, you know, the Penelope, you know, race, race car, uh, very- uh, They were cute, yeah. And we made them, I remember sending you photos of big four by fours and we made them, as you say, just a bit fiercer because uh, they are the death, the fierce death machines that the cats fear. And, and then going through the process, uh, you and I, um, Ailish, worked um, hard on the illustrations. And I remember we found it really difficult to make sure that the right illustration was on the page with the right text. And we couldn't really do it. So we got into a bit of a... Um, mm -hmm. Well, we just decided that we couldn't do it. So that's when Miriam got involved. And we sent Miriam a whole load of words, a whole load of pictures. Um, Miriam, can you talk through a bit about how you kind of put it all together? Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, exactly. That's what I received. I received a lot of text and a lot of images. And I had to go through, get familiarized with the content, with the illustrations, with the different characters, etc. And then, um, well, the first thing you need to define is uh, uh, page size because everything changes according to the page size. Um, so the page size was the first thing and then you define the text like a legible text size. And then once you have these two kind of sets, um, that's when you start putting in the text and then seeing where it matches with the illustrations. And it was a bit tricky because in some parts the text would flow over the illustration. That's when, you know, 
Alice and I had to kind of work closely to maybe reduce an illustration, add some different parts, move things around. Uh, so there's a lot of work in progress to kind of get all the pages uh, properly set. Um, but it, it's, it's always an interesting, it, it, for me, it's a very interesting part of the process because it's, it's how do you put this? Like, it's the only way to make the reader understand the text properly when it's matched with the right illustration. And if you don't get that, you could, you know, you could create confusion, et cetera. So, so it, it, it had to be done in a, in a way that, so yeah, for example, the one that you're seeing on the screen on the left, that was a bit tricky because the, I don't know, the legs were kind of cut off. So we had to place it in a way that works, but then the text underneath was very small, et cetera. So, so it's kind of working page by page. In the beginning, you work on the full book and then you go into the detail of the, the pages and reduce uh, illustrations accordingly. I, I remember so, going- And then of course you have yeah. the whole book. Yeah, yeah, no, go on, go on. No, 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 go ahead, sorry. It's a little delay. No, I was just going to say, like, sometimes you end up with way more pages than you anticipated, and then you have to kind of go back and, and, and you know, reduce somehow, whether it's, you know, the size of the illustration or, you know, the size of the text or something to adjust until you get the final perfect book that's legible and that's clear for everyone. It, it, exactly. I remember when you first sent through the very early stage PDF, Bashaya, you were you were spared all this work, um, all this back and forth. But I remember that um, reading the text, um, there were a few instances where, like if you look at the, t the image on the screen now with um, the cat, a uh, kill tooth and around the legs, the text sort of um, bringing that scene to life, wouldn't be on that page and would be on a few pages later. And we would just sort of be scrambling around to think, how can we get the illustration on the same page as the relevant text, but not leave any yeah. gaps? Um, and it was kind of impossible, <clears throat> like a mad game of Tetris. So um, Ailish was brilliant and we did what we could and then had a text which did have some white spaces and then we kind of went to Ailish and said um can you draw us some like little illustrations that can fill up the gaps and so on the on the screen here these are some of the illustrations I particularly like the um the recycling bins I think Bashaya you and your sister gave us the idea of a cat sort of scrambling around the recycling bins desperately hoping for some food that's true that's true i remember that actually and and looking at these illustrations especially the one with the sardine Ailish, i wish you were with me uh during the talk at the emirates literature festival because there was a q a session and all the kids were just asking me questions about the illustrations <laughs> it would have been fantastic to have you there what did and they this, ask like this one boy asked why did you put sardines instead of tuna <laughs> What did you say? I remember. I remember saying that uh, you know. I think there's a there's a page in the book where uh, the cats are having uh, tuna as well, so they have you know variety <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. They have they love fish, all types of fish. <laughs> yeah, they're not fussy, our cats. So eat anything. <laughs> And there was this other this other kid as well who asked, "Why did you put human legs uh, on the cover?" Okay. Uh, yeah, they were all great questions, to be honest. Yeah. Those are great questions. And I remember trying to explain to them that it was from the point of view, the book is supposed to be from the point of view of the cats, not from the humans. You know, so cats are small and they can't really, unless they look up, they're not going to see their human faces. They can just see their legs walking around. Yes, yeah, the point of view, the eye view of the cats is what we liked. Um, and uh, Miriam, I was wondering if there was any um, visuals that you wanted to share from your end of the process. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, it's, it's, it's a great segue because on the cover itself, that was, for me, I think the biggest challenge. Yes. Um, because the cover, I mean, I'll show you some, some process work. Um, Bashai, very quick process hold up the, sorry Miriam, Bashaya, could you hold up the cover just before Miriam shares the screen? Um, yeah, lovely. And then maybe just the back and the flaps. Yes. 
so nice. Thank you. And then there's also flaps. Yes. I remember having fun choosing that colour, lovely photos of orange because we mm -hmm. wanted to match Dear Twitch. And then we've got a little extra of the book. So that's the finished cover. And then Miriam, if you show the painful road <laughs> to finding that cover. It wasn't that painful, but um, actually tell you, sorry, do you mind making me host for a second? I'm not able yes, to of course. Um, one sec, make host. So I remember um, we also asked Ailish to work very hard, not just as an illustrator, but suddenly doing the typography as well. So mm -hmm. that was a bit of a curveball. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm showing you here is the first sketches of the cover. And it was trying to find the balance between uh, you know, having something that's attractive. The cover is always challenging because the cover is the first kind of point of contact for the, for the viewer whether it's in a bookshop or anywhere really, um, for, to the book. And you have to, you know, in that glance, you have to define the setting of the book, uh, the story of the book or the theme of the book, and then kind of the world you're stepping into. The so, age group for the reader. Age group, exactly. So the, the cover is always a challenging part, but it's the most fun part. So, uh, so this is literally the first uh, um, option for the cover. Yeah. And this is another one. So you start where the ideas, like the idea is starting to come here where we are placing the three cats and kind of like in the center of the book and from their point of view. And this is uh, kind of third option of the book, of the cover, sorry. Uh, and this is where it starts coming to life closer to what we have currently, but it still wasn't working 100%. Um, this is a developed version of that same cover. We wanted the ladies. Yeah. Um, so there was the too many, it was too masculine, we decided, um, the earlier cover. So then um, Eilish drew sort of beautiful uh, lady shoes and, and the edges of an abaya. Um, so we like that. And then you'll see that in the final cover, we actually changed the shoes to be a more traditional Emirati sandal. Um, yeah, that you can see there. Yeah. yeah. And that's the final cover, actually. Um, so we really wanted to, to just touch on what Bashair was saying earlier, we really wanted the cover to be from the point of view of the cats and kind of what they would see and creating the mess that they find them, themselves in when, while being on the streets, et cetera, and being kind of confused, all these people around them. So, I mean, it was a small bumpy road to get to that point, but I think at the end we kind of, we, we got there and, and I mean, we think it's kind of, it's it's doing the job it was supposed to. And it stands out quite nicely as well. And and the colors are so um, um, original, let's say. Like, they're unusual for a kid's book. Yes. But they're also so interesting. Uh, and the, that touch of orange in, in, in the cat and in the text, and then that's kind of taken kind of everywhere in the laces. Yeah, we had fun it's, with the laces. Yeah. <laughs> So it kind of brought everything together. Um, I think I think the sneakers were um, your idea, Bashaya, to add um, like a more like contemporary touch. You know, we wanted to be relevant to what people in Dubai look like and they wear all kinds of shoes. So I like that we've got an Emirati sandal, um, some nice sort of elegant lady shoes and then some sneakers, which we would be wearing, like running around, running around town. Mm -hmm. um, so that was fun to... Um, quite magical for like the Shire to go oh can I see sneakers and then I'd whatsapp Ailish and then like 20 minutes later Ailish would be like here you are so that was really fun I love that and um, guys as we sorry Bashaya no Ailish was so great at that Ailish I, I've told so many people that that you know that the illustrator actually isn't from Dubai never lived here and has never even been to Dubai and everybody I told that too get shocked like wow how and you know we'd, we, we'd explain you know we, we'd send pictures pictures for reference and even even if there were small details that you weren't aware of and it, you know we'd point it out and you'd immediately just tweak it and, and make it perfect and I think that's what's so beautiful about the book is that children and even adults can look through it and really recognize Dubai in the book yeah, that was a lot of fun. We really, we really enjoyed that. And um, I think Ailish even like traced over some of your Bashaya, was it you Bashaya or Miriam who did the bubble writing in Arabic for the signs? That was you Bashaya, yeah. Uh, I remember you being like, oh, I don't have good handwriting. 
and be like, no, it's fine. Ailish will trace. Um, guys, as we as we wrap up for today, um, I wanted to ask you, Bashaya, um, if we have people watching who um, are maybe in your shoes a couple of years ago, and also um, Ailish and Miriam, you know, you work in the in the creative space. These are really like hard, sought after jobs. Um, do you have any um, advice that you'd give aspiring writers, aspiring illustrators, and designers on how to get started, particularly perhaps in the Gulf or even in in the UAE, um, on how to um, yeah find your find your passion and get going with what you love doing. Um, I've, I've, I studied in a school where my teachers were very encouraging and supportive of my interest in creative writing. Then when I was in university, I took a course in creative writing and I did a, after graduating, I also did a workshop myself in novel writing. So I think for me, just uh, pursuing these little courses and workshops by the experts, so to speak, helped me a lot, helped me build confidence, it helped me develop my skill. So I would encourage anyone who's who's really truly interested in creative writing to actually pursue it that way and to seek, to not be afraid or hesitate to seek guidance from people who just might be a little bit more experienced. Fantastic. I think that's, yeah, that makes complete sense. And at DreamWork Collective, we try and host some workshops as well to help people um, feel like there's a bit of a community around them. Um, Miriam and Ailish, any any thoughts on your own sort of uh, journeys um, in the creative professions and any tips for people who want to follow your footsteps? Where I go? Um, uh, so I would say for, for me, a lesson that I learned with this project is really to stay true to your style direction because I think as an illustrator, it's really important to be able to have a diversity of technique because you have different clients with different um, different styles. And like the world is trending towards, you know, 3D and uh, augmented reality. Um, and there's this kind of like sense that you need to kind of chase modernity and the new thing. But for me, my, my passion has always been pencil and paper and, um, and naivety and you know I think I was at a crossroad last year where I was like do I um, pursue you know modernity or do I um, stay true and, and and it is a struggle for anybody who is an illustrator um, you have to balance being cur uh, current uh, but I do think it's really important even if it's as a side as a side to keep developing your own personal aesthetic you know and, and going back to what you truly love doing so I think that's kind of um, what this project for me was definitely a revelation that you can stay true to your aesthetic and and find work um, following you know your tr your true style so yeah absolutely thank you um, and and Miriam um, any thoughts on um, well Miriam and I we've worked together for years now um, we started yeah. in 2014 um, and Miriam then exclusively did book jacket designs um, so you've mm -hmm. had a very varied career in design. I have I have I've, I've jumped around a lot in different industries uh, within graphic design but the constant is that I've always like uh, found projects that I liked or that I was uh, more passionate about. I understand for various reasons people have to take different projects that they're not necessarily passionate about. But my advice is try to find the ones that you will actually enjoy um, because it will make the work much much better. And um, for example, for me this book was, I mean, I'm I'm all up for the cause. I love it so much. Uh, I myself have a rescue cat as well, and he looks exactly like Twitch. So it was very close to hard to work on this book. So I really enjoyed it. Uh, so that's it. That's my advice. Try to find the projects that you're interested in. And I know, Miriam, that um, you well, you work full time. You're completely booked up and you had no time to take on this project. And you did it carving out time from your weekend <laughs> um, as a passion project. So we really appreciate that. Um, yeah, it was a pleasure. Guys, thank you so, so much. And um, all viewers, thank you for watching. And if you've got any questions about the DreamWork Collective, the Shires writing, how to get started in your own creative journey, you can drop us a message and one of us will get back to you. Um, leave us a comment. And thank you so much. Thanks, Team Cats. And I hope we work on another project yeah. together really soon. Thank you. Bye, thank everyone. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.